guys, Carl Cooper here with On the Black, and I am joined by Vinny Cartiglia of Metzilla, and now to Mets Blog. What's going on, Vin? Hey, what's up, Carl? How you doing, man? How's I'm everything? Doing, doing good, doing good. So uh, last time we spoke was was April. Uh, what's been new since since April? Tell us a little bit about what's going on in Metzilla, and also uh, uh, you're contributing to, on Mets Blog now too. Yes, uh, I. Uh was running a few tests for Matt, and uh, everything kind of just worked out. And now I'm, you know, helping out with some morning news posts, uh, a couple pre games here and there. I did my first post game the other night. Uh, Matt, uh, Mike had asked me to do it. I guess with Matt not around right now, I could probably contribute a little bit more. But uh, I think mostly new- morning news posts is where I'll, I'll be uh, helping out there the most. I'm very happy to be a part of it. And uh, as far as Medzilla, it's the same thing. You know, we're just writing every day, trying to stay on top of the news trying to give as much opinion pieces as we can and just, you know, having a lot of fun with it. And it's a lot of fun to write, so. Yeah, yeah, well, definitely, uh, you know, congrats on, on Metzilla continuing to grow and congrats on being a contributor on Mets blog. You know, from since you started, I've been a fan of your site, so it's, it's good to, to, to kind of watch you guys grow over there. That, that's pretty Thank cool. You, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm rocking my on the black for you. you I, want- and I appreciate that. <laughs> One of my favorite Mets blogs. I read you every day, man. Cool, cool. I appreciate that. So, hey, this team we're, we're watching right now, first game in, in Detroit. They are finally at 500. We'll see if they can maybe get over that hump tonight. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to jinx it. It's still early. Yeah, so yeah, knock, knock on wood, knock on wood. But, um, you know, team sitting at 500 right now. Obviously, they've they've had a lot of injuries this year, so on and so forth. I mean, where, where are they at right now compared to your expectations of the team coming into the season? Well, coming into the season, I did a predictions post, and I said that I thought the Mets could win 83 to 84 games. My actual prediction was 84 games. Uh, in a couple conversations I've had with people, uh, like the guys that over at the Happy Recap on their radio show, I thought a ceiling for the team could be 87, 88, and that's saying if all things went right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray is having a big year, Davis, Wright, uh, Beltran, uh, Johan coming back, that maybe you know they could really contend. Well, nothing has gone right, and they're <laughs> sitting at 500. So I, I, I don't, I gotta say that they're exceeding my expectations because if you would have told me in you know, February or March, that right would be done and Davis would be gone and, you know, guys like Turner and Murphy would be playing every day. I, I, I don't think I would have thought 500 going into Detroit with a 5 nothing lead in the fourth. So, I, I mean, I got to be honest. I, I guess at this point they're actually, ex, you know, exceeding my expectations. Cool, cool. cool. Now, qu- question for you on that. How, how much of that do you attribute to Terry Collins uh, managing this team? Because I, I personally think, like, you know, in past years under Randolph or under Manuel, this team will probably have spiraled out of control by now with all their injuries. I mean, have you, you given Collins any credit for this? And, and if so, how much? Well, how many times have you said to yourself or a friend or got an email or something and someone says to you, if this was last year, man, we, they would have put you know, that the end. I feel like I say that every week. Yeah. This team has a loss every single week that I say to myself, this could be the se- season could be over. I mean, they'll blow a, a three-run three lead in the seventh. They'll lose it in the ninth. They'll blow it in the eighth. They'll come back, rattle off two, three wins. I think at some point you really have to start giving the manager credit because in 09 they had all these injuries. And, I mean, Beltran was playing great before he went down. Wright was playing great. Wright stayed healthy the whole year, but the team didn't, didn't play like this. Right. Last, they got the reinforcements back and spiral downhill. So I, I think at this point you really got to start giving Collins a lot of credit, even though his in-game decisions sometimes really just have me shaking my head, yeah. and, I, and I don't get it. But I, I think with a manager, maybe the most important thing isn't really so much how you manage in the game, but how you get your players to play for you and get in the most out of your players. And I think that's what we're seeing with Collins, I, I, because the bunting is, is, is off the charts, but yet these guys come out every day. I mean, we got guys like Tejada contributing, mm-hmm. Turner. Mm-hmm. Murphy contributing every day. I, I mean, even guys in the pen that are shaky are still giving him good outings. But it, it's just, I, I think you do have to give a lot of credit to Collins on this. I mean, look, this is a ragtag team, and we're about to, to go over 500 if they keep this up. Yeah, and, and yeah, I, I, I hope so. I hope so. Now, speaking of, of guys contributing, let's, let's talk about someone who, you know, may not be contributing at least the way I think he should be contributing, and that's Jason Bay. Um, yeah. you, uh, you recently blogged about he's hitting, but he's not hitting home runs or he's not hitting for power. And, and, you know, from my standpoint, 
to me, that's that's what he's supposed to be here to do. That's what he's paid to do. And we are really missing that, especially with Wright and with Davis out right now. You know, we, we saw it the other night in, in Detroit where I think it was like, uh, not Detroit, to Texas. I think it was Reyes got on first inning. Uh, he stole a base. Then sacrificed over, then a wild pitch, and that's how they scored. And then the next inning, Michael Young comes up, hits a home run, tie game just like that. And it just seems like, you know, even though our offense is doing okay, it, it takes a lot for us to score runs without this power. And, and part of that lies on Jason Bay's shoulders. I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on this guy? <laughs> well, it, it's so it's so touchy because, like I like I wrote about, uh huh. It I, I I don't mind not a person, a player, not hitting home runs. If mm-hmm. a guy hit. 15 home runs in the three, four, five, six spot or whatever, but drive in 100, 110, I'm going to take that because the object to me is getting the runs in. But the problem with Jason Bay and with a lot of fans would look at it, and like you said, is, you know, we brought him here to hit 30 home runs. So the fact that he has nine in two years is, is not cutting it, and especially not the $18 million a year. So you can't be happy with what Jason Bay is doing, but I'm almost willing to sit back and say, all right, you know what? We may never see this guy hit 30 home runs. We may never see this guy hit 15 home runs again. But if he could just see him drive in 100, then at least he can contribute to the team. And maybe he has to be a six hitter now. He's not the four hitter that we wanted him to be. But we have to get a contribution from Jason Day. He can't hit 220. He can't drive in 40 runs. He has to contribute to this team. He has to drive in runners from third. I mean, two weeks ago, he had one RBI in two weeks, and it was a swinging bunt to bring the guy in from third base. So if he's going to hit singles and he's going to hit doubles, I need to see him drive in runs. That's what he's on his team for more than anything is to drive in runs. He's supposed to be a presence in the middle of the lineup to bring runners in. And, and that's what I'm most disappointed about Bay. Not, not so much the home runs because you see in City Field, nobody's really hitting home runs anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and that's a good point. It, you know, but it, he's, he's got to do more than, than slap the ball around. I mean, well, you know. He's the new Luis Castillo right yeah, now, and that's, that's not what he's supposed to be I didn't want to, to cut doing. you off. That's what I was going to say. He's the new version of Luis Castillo. <laughs> Three times the amount. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's tough to watch sometimes, but uh, I, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens because he's not going anywhere. No, he's not. Not with that money. He's I not hear a lot of people anywhere. saying that we should swap Dunn for Bay, and, and I actually had a conversation with a, a customer that came into the shop today talking about it, and I said to him, I said, look, I, you know, I get it. I totally understand. Everyone's frustrated about Bay and this and that. And a lot of people believe if Dunn comes over, he'll just miraculously start hitting again. But what if Dunn doesn't start hitting again? And now we have a 180-210 Adam Dunn with, that's an awful defender. Yeah. At least with Bay, we could look at it and say, hey, you know, he's not hitting, but he's not killing us in the outfield, in, in that big outfield in City Field. So you got to take a look at it like that, too. And, and like I said to the person, too, if it was Adam Dunn who was on the Mets and Jason Bay who was on the White Sox, then you would be saying the opposite. Let's get Bay over here because he'll start hitting. It's just because we're watching Bay every day and yeah. kind of really are starting to hate him almost that you, that you just want to get rid of him and you'll look at any at anybody. You almost to take anybody at this point. But I, I don't think taking another bad contract on, for it, it's just not, it, to me it's not worth it. No, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Now, last time we talked, again, it was, it was closer to the beginning of the year, talked a little bit about Mike Pelfrey. Um, you know, I know you, you, you were you were confident in Pelfrey at that uh, point in time. You gave him a vote of confidence. I mean, where where, where are you right now with, with Mike Pelfrey uh, after watching him uh, uh, this year struggle at times and not really taking that next step like, like we all want him to do? I, I guess, you know, he is what he is. I guess this is it. I mean, I mean like we spoke about last time. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a lot of, well, he's young. He, he has time to improve. He will build off this. He'll build off this. Well, now he's been in the league a long time. Yep. Uh, there's no more building. Nope. I mean, this is it. So if you're going to rattle off three, if you're willing to say that I can accept Mike Pelfrey having three bad starts and five good starts or the opposite, then you're willing to accept Mike Pelfrey. Uh, for me, I almost feel like with arbitration coming up and he's going to be getting seven point something million, maybe closer to eight million, nine, who knows, uh, I'm almost willing to say, you know, at the end of the season, let's see what we could get for Pelfrey or even at the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. Let's see what he's worth and let's see what we could bring in for him. Rather than saying we're going to trade Beltron and, and guys like that, who I don't think you're going to bring that much back for. You have a young Mike Pelfrey. Maybe there's a pitching coach that thinks they could really turn him around and they could use him. Maybe you could get something more valuable that could help you out in the long run. 
But I, I think this is what Mike Pelfrey is, and you might rattle off seven or eight, nine good starts. Yeah. Uh, and or you might, you know, you, you might go three good, five bad, or yeah. vice versa. Yeah, and and you know, I I, I can. I can live with the Mike Pelfrey that we have now if he's our fifth starter. But I can't live with him with the rotation that we have and he's supposed to be the front uh, a front of the line starter. You, you know what I mean? So if if the makeup of the pitching staff was a little bit different then maybe I could I could live with with what he's doing because you know you know that's what he's pitching like right you know right now. He's pitching like a 3, 4 or a 5. He's not pitching like a 1 or a 2. Well, and let's so, be honest. If, if Johan came back right now, Pelfrey's the one that should go. Yeah, and and that and that will be an interesting decision to see what happens when uh, when Santana uh, does come back. If everyone's still still pitching the way that they they are, you know, what do they do? You know, I, I don't think Pelfrey is suited for the bullpen. So you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it'll, no. it would definitely be a tough decision. It's definitely going to be interesting, but I do think we know that Alderson's not going to, you know, pull any cards here with this. I, th- I think he's showing us if you're playing well, you're going to play. Right. And if you're not, then you're, you know, you're going to be moved on. So I, I, I think that at least if Johan comes back, maybe they'll go to a six-man rotation to start to get Johan, you know, going. But I, I think that at this point right now, I have to say Pelfrey's the odd man out. And, and like you said, if he's your fifth starter, you could deal with it. But right. They, they dubbed him the ace in the beginning of the year, so... No, he's I mean, definitely what, not that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what we're hoping for. Right, right, right. Hey, man, thanks for uh, joining me again. For everyone watching, be sure to check Vinny out over at Metzilla and then also contribute on over at Mets Blog. Thanks, man. No problem, man. Anytime you know it. I love the site. You call me, I'm on. All righty.